Welcome back to Waterpark Rangers Let's Play Kingdom Hearts. In the last episode, we finally finished building that raft, and we wanted to set sail on it next morning to find new worlds. I just can't wait. Once we set sail, it'll be great. Great! I'll get my stuff! And Sora's very untidy. Doesn't he have anywhere to put his shorts? Oh no! The raft! Yes, we better get to the island, or else that raft is going to be history in that hurricane. Also, this is the only time that you ever hear about Sora, any of Sora's family. Because that was Sora's mom right there. And yeah, what a horrible mother. She basically, you never hear about any of his family at all in the rest of the series or this game. They're never mentioned even once. His mom's like the worst mom ever. She just lets him jump out the window to go at the island during a storm. With purple lightning, this isn't any ordinary storm. There's some kind of crazy thunderball up there. And Kyrie's. So the others have the same idea that we did. But they're not the only people here in the island. Oh my god! It's the monsters of the dream. So, uh, as you can see, our wooden sword does positively nothing against them. Um, the reason being is that it's kind of problem solution logic. You may dream up very potent weapons in your imagination. Like dream swords that can fight these guys. But the reality is... In the real world, your abilities are not going to be quite the same, and therefore, instead of having a dream sword, um, you have a wooden sword that can't do anything to these immaterial creatures. There are other forces that can damage them, but nothing we have right now is potent enough, so I would suggest just running away from them for now. There isn't anything you can do to them, and they can just do minor damage to you. Unless you're playing on a higher difficulty setting, which they do a bit more, just like every other enemy. And it appears that um, some parts of the map have been modded, uh, during the storm. The ladder at the back of the island is missing, and you can't go to the back side of this island either. Um, so anyway, what you gotta do is go up to where you fought Riku previously, just avoid those things, and uh, you should be fine. Just head across there, and then we can progress the story. Very important scene here. Where's Kairi? I thought she was with you. The door is open. What? The door is open, Sora. Now we can go to the outside world. What are you talking about? We've got to find Kyrie. Kyrie's coming with us. Once we step through, we might not be able to come back. We may never see our parents again. There's no turning back. But this may be our only chance. We can't let fear stop us. I'm not afraid of the darkness. And now, the moment of truth. Riku. Where Sora takes his hand. This doesn't seem like his intents are outright malicious. They're not, but this is kind of a defining moment for the two of them. Yeah, their relationship is a bit more than rivals. It's a bit more complicated. And ambiguous, for now anyway. And I guess I'll leave that ambiguous until things become more clear. It's an interesting development. I like this game's story. And now, something I never understood, because I'm not too familiar with the whole series. When Sora refuses to take Riku's hand, he ends up in the hand that he outstretched but didn't grab. He's holding this weapon, whose name I don't even need to say, because the game will say it for me. And I don't know how he came into possession of it. I'm sure there's some kind of explanation that's tied into, perhaps, um, some of the more recent ones that came out. I know I explained a bit more about um, kind of the inherited wills of the characters that appeared early on in the series and then got passed down. Because this game does not take place in the beginning of the Kingdom Hearts timeline. Far from it. Um, although it is the first one, and I don't know how much they had planned when they first came out with this one. Maybe they knew it would be a success to have sequels and add on to the story. But as it is, I'm not entirely sure why Sora gets this weapon right at that moment. If you know, feel free to, to mention. Like, I know it might sound spoilerish, but just go ahead and mention it. Because I have no idea what it is. People, just be careful reading the comments. If there's an answer down there that you, you're not sure you want, then, then don't comment on this video. <laughs> just save it for save your breath for the next ones. You know, the breath that is actually inside of your hand, if that makes sense. Uh, anyway, as you can see, the Keyblade um, is an effective weapon for fighting these creatures. And we need to fight everything we meet, because that's how you get experience and grow stronger. I might cut some fights that get tedious but I might not. It really depends on what I feel like doing. Also, there is now a door leading to the mysterious place from before. Kyrie. 
where the other door is. Sora. And the door is finally opened, like Riku said it would. And something was unleashed from deep within there. Like I mentioned in an earlier video, purple stuff. Purple Florp. And now the island is completely wrecked. It's probably like spinning around, it's spinning around the sky. It is getting pulled into that eye of the storm. And what's more, we have that guy from the dream. I'm gonna go ahead and just say his name right now. This enemy's name is Darkseid. Um, it doesn't really mean anything. He apparently spawns from Sora's shadow and is some kind of manifestation of him. Of his evilness? I don't know. People have commented on this before, that it's possibly common on how Sora is not very evil. Theref therefore, Darkseid isn't very um, powerful. He's pretty much just as weak as he was the first time you fought him. So you just gotta beat him again. The only difference is that now the scenery is cooler. Once again, you want to watch out for his uh, chest lasers and the fact that he can summon the smaller things that come out of that portal that spawns when he punches the ground. I feel like he could have been a cool boss if he was maybe a little bit faster and not quite so pathetic, but I guess they kind of had to have someone who showed you the ropes of combat. In case I haven't mentioned this before, um, and if you couldn't tell, like with the fight with Riku so far, this game is somewhat unmerciful in terms of difficulty. It's a lot harder than most games, in my opinion. It's not the hardest game ever, but some parts of it are really tough. Really tough. Expect to die quite a bit. And there we have it. Darkseid's not tough. We defeated him without any trouble. And now I love this part. I love how Darkseid gets pulled into the storm. If I could select a clip for this video, it would be the instant it shows him get pulled into the storm. But YouTube just lets you have three random clips, so oh well. And now we follow suit. It's kind of like the Subspace Emissary. I mean, I don't want to compare it to that because I like the story of this a lot more, but if you've played Brawl, you know what I'm talking about. How it's kind of like the things that are like sucking up the worlds from subspace or whatever. It was a really dumb story. It's a badly written fanfic. Totally no correlation between that and what just happened. <laughs> What if that was just a plane moving away? So Donald and Goofy and Pluto have arrived at this cool place. Traverse Town. The hub world of the game. Just about. That's the right word for it. Hey, you know, maybe we ought to go find Leon. Goofy puts up with a lot of crap from Donald. But I kind of like Donald's character in this game. He's peevish. It's unusual for a protagonist like that's so closely associated with the main group. So there's something nice about that. What a dream. <laughs> what a oh, daring dream. This isn't a dream. Oh, where am I? Do you know where we are? Oh. Hey! <laughs> Alright, I guess we gotta follow Pluto. Anyway. Uh, we are now officially in a brave new world. Or a weird one, anyhow. This is totally weird! I'm in another world! I love reading the voices. I kind of make him sound like the derpy way that he sounds, especially in the second game. And kind of in Chain of Memories. In Chain of Memories, it's weird because they use the model of him from this game unchanged with the kind of derpy, like, adolescent voice that he gets in Kingdom Hearts 2, so it's a really creepy, unsettling combination. So I really like this one just so much more than the others. And oh boy, a whole bunch of dialogue that I get to read. Sid would be a cool character if not for something that you're gonna find out about him later. Hey there, how can I? Aw, oh, it's only a kid. 
I'm not a kid, and the name's Sora. Okay, okay, simmer down. So why the long face, Sora? You lost or something? No, well, maybe. Where are we? Huh? Traverse Town. So, Gramps, is this really another world? Don't call me Gramps. The name's Sid. Anyway, not sure what you're talking about. This sure ain't your island. Hmm, guess I'd better start looking for Riku and Kairi. Well, good luck with whatever it is you're doing. If you ever run into trouble, you come see me. I'll look out for you. So this is a good place for us to just save. You can come here and stand on this spot. It will heal you instantly of all your troubles. And you will run into some troubles in this town, I guarantee you. <laughs> and you'll see exactly what kind of troubles those are next episode when we explore Traverse Town. See you then.